Hey, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're looking at Testament, which should be on Kickstarter as of the airing of this video. This is from Japanime Games, and as you can see from the art style, this is certainly a Japanese RPG-inspired experience here. I'm gonna walk you through the tutorial mission. Why the tutorial? Because this game is super hard, and that's the only one that I have some confidence I might be able to show you a win with. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on the demo copy that I play, which certainly is not final, then go and check out my separate review video. But for now, I'm going to walk you through setup and how to play the game and then show you a full mission, a full stage of the game. So first in Testament, you always have four heroes in play, these four shown here. And they each have limits of certain tokens. They each have different life values, little special abilities, and also a big special ability they can fire off if you build up this meter in the game. And they each kind of fulfill a sort of trope or archetype you got the brave warrior slash defender Holland pulling aggro and blocking for the rest of the people. He has the most health and sort of an MMORPG kind of style. You've got the sort of like ranger, thief, roguish uh, direct damage dealer, the uh, splash damage dealer, area of effect wizard, and then your sort of white mage-ish healer. But the thing is you set up your skills for each character at the start of the game using six separate skill types. So like healer skills, mage skills, tank skills. And you can freely assign these to each of the characters. So if you want Holland to have all like black mage attack magic with more hit points than that would normally entail, you can do that. So the first step of setup is to set up your heroes. Each of them is going to get four skills, except for Kukurito, who gets plus one starting skill, so we'll get five. Now playing in the tutorial, you're going to have to pick among these level one skills. So you'll see each one has kind of a skill upgrade tree. So you've got four of the level one skills. 2A and 2B level 2 skills, and then variations on A and B at level 3. So A1 and A2, uh, B1 and B2. And that's the same for all of the classes. You've got kind of like some basic skills that can get upgraded out along a few different paths. Now we're going to do the leader of the group, Holland, first. Uh, his big claim to fame is that he has more hit points than everybody else, and he can hold one more shield token. So he is better at being a tank than the average person. So the big thing I want to do to take advantage of that is try to pick skills that have aggro value. So basically add some attention of the enemies onto that character. Because whichever person has the most aggro is the one getting attacked. And clearly if he has the most hit points and can have the most defense, I want that to be him. So the only basic skills that give aggro are the basic maid skill, energy bolt, and the basic healer skill, heal. Both of those give one aggro. But there's another pretty major thing to consider for building your characters, and that's this little rank adjustment value up here. What you're going to do is you're going to add all of these up. So let's say just for uh, silliness, I took all four basic maid skills. I would have minus eight rank adjustment. So I would look, and here Holland says if he has minus six or less, he starts with rank one. So he only has 16 life. But let's say instead that I took four of the basic tank skill fortress, which each have three value. That would give me 12 total. So then I would look, oh my gosh, four or more would give Holland 32 life. So I would double his life value. Nothing else changes, by the way, just life. But I would double his life value because of the skills I chose. So you can drastically change the feel of your group, drastically change how uh, powerful or weak and vulnerable they are based on the skills you give them. So definitely something to consider. So for Holland, let's give him a little bit of a mix. I'm giving him energy, vault, and heal, one of each, which will give him some ability to pull aggro. And then Fortress removes aggro from himself. That's not great, but also gives him shields. Again, he's the best one to have shields because he can have a higher max. And then each character gets to level up once if you're playing on the tutorial or twice if you're playing on level one. Basically, you get one level up for each level you're on because you can jump straight to the uh, final boss if you really want to and just immediately level up. It's kind of like uh, separate stages that you can play as a campaign if you want. So I want Holland to have more life and I want him to be able to get more shields. And I also don't like that I remove aggro. So I'm going to upgrade his fortress into the B version of level two defender. Let's me take away these little threat tokens that the boss can put on you, which are pretty nasty. Still gives him one shield. Uh, he can empower it. We'll get into this when we talk about the play. But basically, he can uh, give himself more shields with these stars, which is a lot cheaper than with that one. So that's going to let him get a ton of shields pretty quickly. And let's see. We've got minus two, minus two. Those both cancel out the defender. So we're left with just three, which isn't quite enough for rank five. So he's going to be in the two to three range of rank four. So he's going to have 28 life. 
uh, ways to heal himself, ways to do some direct damage, and ways to get some shields. So hopefully we can have him tank pretty well. Next on the opposite side of the spectrum, we have Pulset, our wizard. But again, she doesn't have to be a wizard. I can give her whatever I want. Uh, but her special power is every turn she gets a free empower, which means she can boost her skills better than anybody else and get more out of them. Now, I think I'm going to give her and my other two characters a cool hunt. Uh, this is a nice card for a few reasons. Number one, it's got this little boot icon, which basically lets me skip encounters. So I'm going to have to fight the nastiest mob enemies. And number two, for a star, I can move one of her aggro to somebody else. So basically, this will let me uh, really have Holland tank for everybody even better. And it's also a zero value, so it's not hurting her health, which is nice. And that is a little bit odd, but I think I'm going to give her a fortress just to give her a big boost in terms of health so that she uh, hopefully won't die too easily. Because this has a plus three rank bonus. That's pretty much the only reason I want it. I don't really care about the shield too much. Although I guess it does also remove one uh, aggro from her, so that's never bad. And then even though I know I'm kind of playing within type, I am going to give her... Uh, two blasts, I think. Now let's see, she's minus four, plus three. Uh, so that would put her at minus one. If I got even one more point, I'd be at 14 instead of 10 life. So let's see, for my level up, I could level Cool Hunt into Shadow Move. That would give me plus one, so she would gain four more life. I could level into Crusader's March, which decreases damage from everybody except the boss and lets me mess with guys and lets me uh, recover other people's skills. So, uh, you know, it's okay for her to be squishy. She has a lot of ways to get rid of stuff. So let's go and level up one of her energy vaults. So her options are Pyrokinesis. That'll be a minus three, but we saw that uh, minus one more wouldn't affect her health, so she'll still have ten. So that'll do three damage to her. Oh, gosh. But it has three damage, and then she can add... One more, but suffer two more damage. So she can do up to five damage, but take five damage as well. That doesn't seem good for her. Oh, no. Cryokinesis is minus four if I go the other way. Oh, and it gives her two aggro. But she can target a ton of people and do some decent damage to them. All right, well, let's try Pyrokinesis, and maybe I can get some healing on somebody else. But with that, again, she's going to be at minus two, so she'll be ranked two. Not great, but ten life doesn't make her so squishy that she'll die immediately. All right, next we have Kukurito, who's my healer ostensibly, but you see I'm going to kind of uh, change things up a bit. Uh, she can get plus one starting skill, so she'll have five instead of four. And normally she's supposed to be the one with all the healing abilities. But here's the thing, red abilities combo with each other, and I'm thinking maybe she uses her starting skill to just go crazy in red. So the basic red skill is Rabbit Punch. Now there's a slight misprint here, but basically what it means is while it's tapped, because you're going to be like using your skills and exhausting them one at a time, all your other red skills get plus one damage. So if I have all red skills, oh baby, you can kind of see what's going to happen there. And none of these give her aggro, so she's already in a pretty good spot in terms of aggro. She doesn't really get any. Now this is also, though, minus four, which will put her at rank one. I'd love to at least get one higher than that. So before we pick our fifth skill, let's uh, upgrade into Serpent's Tail. This cell will get rid of aggro if she manages to get some somehow. And it's also a zero instead of a minus one. So that puts me at minus three now. So as long as I can make my uh, fourth skill a zero, I should be okay. So I could do another cool hunt. She doesn't need the aggro reduction, but it does deal damage and move past things. Oh, I could also do initiate. I don't have almost any of these little booster uh, cards in my decks so far. Or what the heck? I could really just boost her life by giving her plus three. That would get her all the way to 20 life. Wow. But no, I think it makes sense to have at least some yellow. So let's give her that. All right. So that is plus one and minus three. So minus two overall. So I will still have her in the 16 life range. All right, finally, we have Che, who was theoretically the one who was supposed to have all those red attack skills. But let's have her be more of a healer now, just for the heck of it. And she gets a free extra level up, so she can level up something straight to level three or get two level two things. So let's see, I definitely want her to have more life. So let's balance the minus two from heal with a plus three from fortress. Definitely think we need another a cool hunt to uh, mess with our aggro. That'd be a plus one, which right now would have her with 18 life. Not bad. Let's see, do I ever be like totally mixed and wild with an initiate? Uh, sure. All right, now she's got crazy possibilities here because I could, again, level up twice and make one of these a level three. So looking at some of those, I've got Heaven's Door, which heals everybody and gives them shields and either buffs or debuffs to tons of people. Soul Link, which heals somebody a ton and boosts them as well. Get to my higher green ones, and uh, oh, this is a cool one. Brave Song. While it's uh, tapped, we get bonus to our force roll every round, which is really powerful. Oh my gosh, what the heck? I could just get Healing Wave, make myself way weaker, but if I boost it, I could heal everybody for, what, nine health? Jeez. You know, I really want shield from the fortress. Maybe I go with Shield Charge. Uh, two damage. I debuff the person I attack. 
I can remove two aggro from anybody. I can stun. That seems pretty nasty. All right, so let's try that out. And let's see, two, three, minus two, one. So that does put her just uh, below rank four with rank three and 18 health. All right, so there we go. It's a bit of a motley crew, but uh, we'll see how they work out. Oh, and by the way, if you want to skip all the stuff I just did, they do have recommended pre-constructed decks, so you can cut setup down significantly if you just want to use those. But the rest of the setup is super simple. You just shuffle your mobs. I'm doing stage zero, which uses the blue easier mobs. You set your soul marker at the first space. If it gets all the way up, that's when one of your characters can use their really cool soul power. You place your step marker on this leftmost space here, and you're good to go. It's as simple as that. So in terms of the basics of the game, it's pretty straightforward. At the beginning of each round, you'll move the step marker forward one. If it gets to a basic blue space, you're gonna draw that many mobs. You just take them from the deck and put them in the spaces. If you would ever have to deal at more than five, which is the limit, each hero takes damage equal to the stage, which for this one is zero, but let's say it was one or higher, multiplied by the number of guys you couldn't put out. So if it was stage one, we couldn't put out two guys, every hero would take two damage. If instead you land on a key space, you check and see whether there are no minions left alive. And if there are none, you get to put a damage value on one of these key spaces. There's two possible for this boss. And basically that's going to damage him automatically at the start of each of his three stages of life. So if I got both keys, he would have six life at each stage instead of eight. If you get to a fire space, you spawn that many mobs and they immediately activate. So it's kind of like an ambush. And finally we get to the boss. A lot of stuff happens, but uh, we'll get to that when we actually fight him. Then the current leader, I made it Holland for now. We'll roll the three force dice. And first you could get a star or a double star that gives you one or two force tokens for the turn. You can get a lightning ball, which increases that yellow soul gauge I showed you before. Or you can get my favorite, the crit, which gives you two stars and lets you re-roll it. The leader freely assigns the force tokens you rolled among the heroes. And basically these will let them boost whichever skill they use with the uh, little empower abilities down here at the bottom. Next, starting with the leader and going clockwise, or in this case, downwise, uh, each player gets to take one action. Generally speaking, they're going to exhaust one of their cards. You can flip it over, tap it, we're just gonna flip them over for this game. And you get to resolve its ability. So first you'll gain any aggro tokens, then you'll do whatever its icon ability is. So here it's healing. You'll do any special abilities. You can also empower to kind of change the icon ability. This is how many times you can empower, and this is the cost of the different empower options. So here, if I had one of those star force tokens, I could either make the heal six heal instead of four, or I could make it have zero aggro instead of one. And the basic icons are explore. That lets you move the step marker forward one without resolving it. So as an example, if I explored while I was here, I would go here and I would skip that entire ambush step. And next turn, I would just go onto the key space. Uh, the sword is damage. It hurts one monster that much. The healing is healing. The shield gives you shields. And shields are nice because you only lose one of them each time you block damage, but you block for your full shield value. So if Holland is awesome and manages to get his max of four shield tokens, then he would do minus four damage. The next time he got attacked, minus three damage, minus two damage, you get the idea. And finally, this little icon is both buff and debuff. For each one value, you can buff or debuff a target. Buffing is a red token. It goes on heroes, and you'll see each hero has a max of two, except for Che, who has a max of three. And basically, it hangs out from turn to turn and acts like those little star force tokens to uh, empower your skills. The stars go away at the end of each round, but these hang out, so they are better. The other option is to debuff a mob enemy or a boss, which means you just literally cover up their leftmost thing that has the symbol, so this guy wouldn't attack anymore, he would just do his little combo action here. Now on your turn, instead of acting, you can pass. What happens when you do that is if you have aggro, you lose two of them, so the monsters pay less attention to you, and you get all your skills back. So you don't have to go through all four of your skills to get them to come back to you. Additionally, if you use your final skill, you immediately get them all back. So if you can time your skill use correctly, then you never have to rest. After all four players have activated, then the enemies activate from left to right, and then the boss, if he's out, will also activate. And basically they just resolve their icons from left to right. They have a similar ones to you. They can debuff you or attack you. There's a combo which makes other monsters do more damage this round. And this is how much life they have. If you can deal that much, you kill them and you gain one soul, which again is a little yellow track that lets you do your soul action eventually. And that's pretty much it. That's the end of the round. You go until you get to the boss 
And with the boss, again, you'll see it, but basically he'll have four actions out. And once you do his damage, then you advance to his next phase, and he summons two more guys again, referring here to his little summon value. So he'll summon two mobs when you first reach him, two more when you beat his first stage, two more when you beat his second stage. So you gotta kill the bosses three times, and they keep on bringing out more guys. They are nasty, as you will see. But enough of that, let's get into our first round of the game. So we are going to step here and spawn two mobs. So first we've got a Watcher. So he will heal, and this little uh, diamond symbol means everybody. So in this case, he'll heal every monster. Then he'll take away one aggro from the person with the most, which basically means he's trying to mess with your aggro distribution. And then he'll attack for two damage. And anytime an enemy targets uh, not everybody with a diamond, they'll target the person with the most aggro. If it's tied, the person with the lowest rank. Uh, if it's still tied, you choose. Oh my gosh, and another watcher. Well, that makes things easy. Okay, now Holland's gonna do the force roll. Okay, and we got two soul and just one focus token. So the soul marker creeps up toward devastation. Now to plan it out, probably the most important thing here is to use cool hunt to skip that space, I think. That way next turn I'll just go into the key space and I probably won't have killed both of the guys so I won't get the bonus damage, but at least I won't get attacked. So to that end, there's not necessarily a huge rush to defeat these guys, but then again, no harm in trying, right? So let's see, if I give the Empower to Holland, then he can do one damage and I can add one target for one force token. I can only Empower once. So I won't have to take any damage, but I will gain an aggro, which again isn't a bad thing for my blocker here. All right, so that'll be one damage to both targets, and Holland will gain an aggro. So we'll bam, we'll bam. Let's see if we can finish off at least one of them. All right, so Che is next. She could do shield charge for two damage, um, or cool hunt. We want somebody to cool hunt to skip getting two more guys. I mean, cool hunt does one damage by itself. See, I guess that makes the most sense. So to explain, does one damage to one mob. Remember the boot lets you skip a space. Uh, you can move a threat token to another hero. That doesn't really matter. You can move a aggro. She doesn't have one. And this symbol means ignore stealth, but uh, none of these guys have stealth. Basically you can't attack stealth guys before other guys unless you use an ability like this. And so Che will go ahead and do that. She'll pick one watcher to take a damage. But more importantly, she's advancing us here without spawning two mobs. <laughs> you know, it might be a little crazy, but I think I'm actually gonna try to kill both these guys. All right, so Serpent's Tail does two damage. It will remove one aggro from me, but I don't have any. I don't have any Empower to use any Empower effects. So bam, that'll finish off the Watcher. There we go. Don't forget, every time we defeat a mob, we get one more soul. And even though it's totally wasting my resources and I'm gonna have to rest again in a second, I'm just gonna go crazy and uh, use Pyrokinesis to do three damage and defeat the other guy. Now, Bassette does get a free Empower every turn, as though she had a Force Token, but she doesn't need four more damage. So she's gonna take three damage, unfortunately, and an aggro, but she'll do the last three and kill the Watcher. And so she's down to seven life. We can get one of our healing guys to help her out. The Watcher is no more, and we're creeping up that Soul Gauge even more. And hey, bonus from this, in the next step phase, we get a key because we have no enemies. So now this boss is gonna have seven life each time instead of eight, great. And Che becomes our new leader. Let's see what our force roll has for us. Okay, that's, ooh, three this time plus one soul. Now the big sort of non-negotiable for this turn is Pulset's gonna have to use her cool hunt to move us into this ambush space because then we'll get the other key. And if we can rest, we can skip the three space as well, maybe. Besides that, I would love to gear up like he could use Defender and get himself a ton of shields to prepare for later. So let's see, he needs two of these to get the full use out of Defender. Where's the other one gonna go? Oh no, I can give it to Kukurito and she can uh, boost somebody. That sounds good. All right, so Che is first. We don't need the shield charge. Uh, she could boost somebody, but I think healing uh, Pulset would be good. I oh, know she is gonna get a aggro, but that's okay. She'll heal all the damage Pulset has taken. She has no force tokens to empower anything. Meanwhile, Kukuriko is gonna use Initiate. So she's got one buff already for the one force I gave her. She can do another buff. And uh, let's see, who needs it the most? And uh, what the heck, let's give it to uh, each of them. Pulset, as expected, is going to cool hunt. There's no mobs of damage, but ooh, she gets a free Empower, don't forget. And she's gonna use that one Empower to move an aggro to any hero. She'll skip that ambush space and give an aggro to Holland, so he's gonna be uh, guarding us again. So boop, sorry guys. And then Holland is ready to tank up. He's already got two aggro. He's gonna use Defender, which would give him one shield and remove threat, but he doesn't have any. And for the two Force Tokens, because he can do it times two, one each time, he's gonna get up to three shields instead. Ooh, I'm feeling good about this. So four shields is his max. If he uses Fortress or something, then he'll be ready for almost any damage that might come his way. All right, no enemy action. So end of round and into the next round. Sorry, big piggy, but you are going to be a little bit weaker. 
Oh, crud. We're not going to be able to skip the three space because I didn't rest to get back either of my cool hunt skills. So we're going to have to fight three guys next round. But I'm not too worried about that. We're looking pretty good so far. All right, we got two Empowers and a Soul Gauge. Just to show you, that's about at the halfway point. Oh, and by the way, I didn't fully explain the Soul Gauge, but basically if it's full, when somebody passes, in addition to taking away two aggro and getting all their cards back, they can activate their Soul ability. So Kukurito heals a ton. Pulsette blasts every monster. Che takes away all of the boss's shields and does damage to the boss. And Holland puts three shields on everybody, including himself. So all super powerful, of course. So let's see, Kukurito first. Uh, where do I want to put these? If she activates Rabbit Punch, she won't be able to hit anybody, but she'll boost her other two Rabbit Punches to do more damage. And she can give herself an Empower. That's not going to matter too much. Pulset could do Fortress for one shield. If I give her the... Or actually, at least one of them, because she gets a free Empower, then that would give her two shields. That's not bad. Holland could do Fortress, but... I mean, I don't really want him to heal next turn. Oh, but if he rests, he'll get rid of all his aggro. Well, let's see. Let's give Che one star to do Initiate. And I guess for now, Pulset will get a star to get more shields. Yeah, the question is, does Kukurito get all her stuff back? Now, I like the idea of her rabbit punches boosting. So now she's got a two damage and then a three damage attack for whatever mobs pop up next turn. Doesn't have any other effect besides that. Well, Set's going to do Fortress uh, with her free empower and her one star. She'll get plus one shield, so that'll be two shields total. Holland, uh, I don't know what to do with you, buddy. He's got all these shields, but if I pass, then he's going to lose his stuff. Maybe I'll try to heal? I mean, nah, there's no way I'm going to heal at all. Although healing does actually at least give me some... Okay, fine, I'll just do Fortress. <laughs> I'll remove an aggro for myself, but I will get my fourth shield. And the next turn I can heal and get an aggro back, and hopefully that'll be enough to keep their attention on me. Okay, and then Che will go ahead and use Initiate, so that'll let her buff uh, two people. Gonna do one on Highland and one on Pulset down there, that way everyone has one. All right, no monsters, but here's three of them. So you got Metal Commander, once again heals everybody, then takes away two aggro, then attacks for four and six life. Wow, he's nasty. After him is a big mouth, four damage attack, minus two aggro, three damage attack. They're really going to mess with my aggro here. And our third one is this Lamia, which I just got a lot of nasty customers here. So this one is super nasty. She would debuff every hero for two, which means she takes away either shields or buff tokens, their choice. Three attack and then force somebody to tap a skill, which doesn't always matter that much. But if all your skills are tapped, you have to pass and basically do nothing on your turn. Well, except for losing the two aggro and such. So Pulset's going to be our leader this turn. Okay, two soul gain and two force. That's not bad. So let's see, that does put me four away from full, which means if I kill these three mobs and the next one, I should be able to fire off right away at the boss, I guess. Now Pulset's energy bolt is going to be boosted by her special power automatically. So I think the clear choice of who should get these is Che, because it's going to let her take away aggro from other heroes. So she should be able to clear everybody out except for Holland and hopefully have the guys focus on him somewhat. So to plan things out a bit, Pulsette's Energy Ball can do two damage. Uh, Kukuriko's Rabbit Punch with the boost from one will do two damage. And Shield Charge can do two damage. So I have like six damage to play around with. And like I said, I think Lamia taking away all my boosts is probably the worst thing that could happen. But Big Mouth does by far the most damage. So it might look like I can't take care of both of them. I gotta suffer from one. But as you'll see, I have a plan for that. So Pulsette's first. She's gonna do one damage. She'll use her free Empower to do another one. She'll suffer two damage, but don't worry, we'll deal with that. And she is gonna get an aggro. Doesn't mean all her skills come back, by the way. Now, shields can protect against any damage, including self-inflicted damage, but they're also optional. And I'm about to heal her, so no reason to stop it and waste my shields. I'm gonna hit the Big Mouth, get him half dead. You'll see why in a second. So Holland's only option is to heal or pass, and luckily things worked out. I will heal, that'll get me one aggro. I'll heal the damage Pulsette just took, yay. Che's gonna use her shield charge, it'll do two damage, give her two aggro, debuff the target. But here's the cool part, one of her options is to stun the target, which means it won't act this turn. So I'll remove two aggro with one force and stun the target with the other. Remember I can use it up to three times here. Two aggro for her, she's gonna target the Lamia. That's two damage and a debuff, although you'll see that won't matter very much. But then she's also stunned, which means she won't act this turn. And for the Empower ability to remove two threat, you might think that I would do it on Che and get her below Holland, but you'd be wrong. Instead, I'm actually going to take away Pulse Sets. You'll see why. And finally, Kukurita will do another Rabbit Punch. It's boosted by this one, so that'll get her two attack. I'll finish off our Big Mouth before he can act. All right, so now we see what happens. Only Metal Commander is activating. So he'll heal all enemies for one. And the negative thing is that's minus one health, and they lose their debuff. So she'll be back to full capability next turn. 
Then, here is my little trick. He's going to take away two aggro from the person with the most. Wait a moment, that wasn't Holland, that was Chase. So thanks, buddy. And then finally, he'll attack the person with the most aggro for four. And that's Holland with his two aggro. But uh, he can just lose one shield to subtract four from that damage, so he'll take nothing. And Lamia just moves back up to show she can activate next turn. So yeah, pretty solid turn there overall. Very happy about that. Right, we're almost to the boss. We're getting one mob. Hopefully somebody a little squishier. Screamer. So this is piercing damage. He does two piercing damage to everybody. And then he lowers aggro and does three more damage. Uh, piercing damage just ignores shields, as you might expect. All right, Holland's back to being our leader. Let's get some souls. Okay, so we got three force and a reroll. Oh my gosh, five force. I don't think I need that much. And our soul gauge does go up one. And where in the heck am I going to put all of these stars? And there's nobody to be healed. I don't need more shields, really. Well, let's see. I can give him one to boost energy bolt in case we attack. I think I might cool hunt with her. That'll deal a damage and move a threat to somebody else, which would uh, get Holland to be even more targeted. Might as well give her uh, one for rabbit punch. It'll just let her add a red token, but that's permanent and these aren't. Let's see. Pulset, I guess, could get one with her free and power. She can use pyrokinesis and just blast the heck out of somebody. Actually, you know what? I think initiate's going to make more sense to take out some of these uh, annoying abilities. And I got an extra one I don't think I'll use, so whatever. We'll just put it over here. All right, so let's see. If Holland attacks, that's up to two damage or one to two targets. Rabbit Punch will do three more damage. Wow. And then pyrokinesis, if I boost it all the way, could do five damage. So I could, in theory, hit both of them for one with the energy bolt, and then a rabbit punch to finish her off, and then pyrokinesis to finish him off and just have the screamer bother me, and I can debuff this. So all he does is lower my threat a little bit and do a bit of damage. All right, so we'll do a boosted energy bolt. I'll add one target, so do one damage to each of them. And that is another aggro for him, which I like. Here you go, friends. Enjoy. Then Che will go ahead and do two buffs. She can give herself one buff. And then she'll debuff the Screamer's really nasty ability since these two guys will be dead. Okay, and I'll Rabbit Punch with plus two, so that's three damage, and use that to get a second buff. And that'll bring all her stuff back, which I guess isn't necessarily great, because now she's going to be weak attacking again for a while. But her three finishes off Lamia. And now it's about to be soul time. And then Metal Commander, do you burn? Let's find out. So we're doing Pyrokinesis, that will give her one aggro uh, with the free Empower and another one. So that'll be five damage, but she suffers seven damage. Oh my god. I could use her shields, but I think I can just heal her back. So <laughs> let's take a chance and just let her sit with it. Oh god. But Metal Commander is done, and that will raise our soul gauge all the way to the top so we can uh, use it next turn. Now the Screamer's first action is skip, so all he does is lower one aggro, then do three damage. Both of those going to target Holland. He'll go down to two, but that's still more than everybody else. And then, uh, actually, I think I'll tank the three damage. He has 28 and try to get up to four shields again. So there we go. All right, so sadly, we're going to boss time. First, we get two more mobs. Uh, mini Might. That's just attack, attack, attack. Okay. And then Skeleton, weak attack, and then heal himself. Not too bad. And here's how the boss works. You have four cards keyed to the boss specifically and then four generic ones. You shuffle them all together and deal four up. So let's see, we got two regulars and two of his. And then you order them by number. So it'll be one, four, seven, eight. So let's see, here he's got a raging charge, which is going to do damage and untap our stuff. And also now we'll get some threat. Now the threat stuff here is in Japanese, but they did send me a paper with the stuff. So the black threat lets you take damage every time you put a skill on cooldown. Okay, then he'll gain some shields and heal and summon two guys. That is not okay. Then he'll attack us three times, get a shield, and do damage equal to the mobs, and then kill every mob, so that can kind of help us, but also hurt us, but it will get rid of all the mobs. And then finally, this is a rage, which means he does extra damage, and he attacks, and yeah, just some nasty stuff in here, but the main thing is summoning two more mobs, yikes. And we put this here to show that he's currently got eight life, although he's actually only got six. Now, it doesn't mean that he takes two damage, it means that his max life is six, because that way, like, he couldn't heal to seven, for example. And just let me put this on step one. Every round, it's gonna advance one, and if we don't defeat this stage before we get to round eight, uh, or after round eight, then we lose, but it resets every time you defeat one of the stages, so I don't think that'll happen. All right, so we're coming down to Che being the leader. Let's see, I would love to not get soul this time, because I don't need it, we're already at max. Oh my gosh, so that's four, uh, six, eat uh, 10 stars is way more than I'll need. So I'll just say everyone has enough stars to do whatever they want to do, basically. So I hate the idea of this boss summoning people 
What I would love to do, it's a little bit crazy, is do six damage to him, immediately defeat this stage. And then if I can do that, if I can make it happen, Pulsette's ability is to do four damage to all mobs, but not the boss. So I could start next turn by doing that and wipe out the three mobs currently there, plus the two more he'll summon, and uh, just leave the boss kind of vulnerable for hopefully stage two and stage three. Now the big question is, can I do six damage? It's two from Shield Charge, and only one from Rabbit Punch. I guess I could use Serpent Tail again, even though I hate to waste it like that. And then Energy Bolt could do two more, but she'd suffer two more damage if you down to died life. I mean, of course I could use my shields. But instead of using my shields, what if I have Holland heal for his action? That'll give him more aggro, which we want. And yeah, he could even boost it, because remember, we got a billion stars to heal six. So she'd be back to only three damage. Yeah, that'll work. So she's shield charging. That's two aggro for her. She'll debuff the boss, but that won't matter because he'll be uh, dead this round. And you can't stun bosses, so she'll just use this ability three times with our infinite stars. So I think she'll just get rid of everyone's aggro except for Holland, so no one else will have any. All right, that's two out of six on the boss. And Kukurito will do two. She could remove aggro. She doesn't have any. She could stun the target, but it's the boss, so just two damage. Kind of a waste there. But hey, at least he's injured. And then the fun one, Energy Bolt doing two damage, but also two to her. She won't use her shields. She's down to uh, one life left. But the boss is defeated. Now, all that means in the moment is that he doesn't act this turn, but then at the beginning of the next turn, we'll advance his stage, get new cards, the other four cards we didn't use yet, uh, plus spawn two more enemies. Okay, and Holland, let's keep our friend alive, get you an aggro, boost it once, so that'll heal six. And that pulse sets down to only three damage, nice. Right, we still have to deal with all the monsters. Now, all this stuff is going to target Holland, because he's got three aggro, nobody else has any. So his screamer will take away one, now he's only got two aggro. And let's just add it up, so three, six, oh wait, he's got shields. Yeah, he can get a bunch back pretty quickly. So three will cancel the Screamer. Uh, two means he'll take one from the Mini Might. One again, plus one, so that's one, two, three, plus two more from the Skeletons. So that's five, and then they would heal themselves, which doesn't matter. So that did clean out his shields, but he has 20 life left, so I think we're okay. All right, now at the start of the turn, because we defeated the boss's stage, he advances again. He's got six life again. This always is subtracted. This would reset to round one if it had moved. And this time we take the four unused boss cards and put them out again in numerical order. So he's got threat lowering. Oh, and something I didn't explain, the boss cards will have a different way of doing debuffs. So you debuff specific cards and then they have the weakened ability whenever given. So here, instead of uh, taking away three aggro, he would take away one. I do X plus one, stage number is zero here. So we would heal not at all and do one damage. And then piercing damage to everybody or a bunch to one person, put some shields on himself. And this one can be horrific after hardening, which gives him two shields. He does three times the number of shields, so six damage, and then takes away his own shields. And then some more damage and healing everyone, that sucks. Let's not forget our two more mobs. If they all have four life, we'll just blast them to kingdom come. Ah, metal commander, you jerk. Okay, and a skeleton, that's cool. So Kukurita becomes our leader. Now I would uh, still like some stars, I guess. All right, so the soul doesn't matter because we're already at max, but that was two, three. All right, so kind of plat out our turn. If Kukuriko punches for one and then Shade does Cool Hunt, that'll do two to Metal Commander. And then Pulsette's soul ability will do four to everybody except the boss. That'll wipe out all the mobs. And then I guess Holland can just use Defender to get more shields. So let's certainly give him two of those. And the extra fourth, I don't think is going to matter, so whatever. Okay, Kukurito, start setting up your strength. So that's just one damage to the Metal Commander. I could have given her the extra star, but she already has her max of two of these boost tokens, so she can't have another one. Okay, Pulsette will pass, so she untaps everything. She would get rid of two aggro if she had it, and then she can choose to use her soul ability. So that's four damage to every mob, but you don't get soul for destroying them, so that's the negative of it. So our soul gauge goes all the way down. All of these guys are gone, except for Metal Commander. He'll have one life left. All right, so Holland will use Defender, and he'll boost it twice, so that'll get me uh, three shields total. And then Shay will use Cool Hunt. Uh, the foot isn't going to matter. He'll just do one damage to a mob and finish off the Metal Commander. And that does start ticking us up because he was not defeated by Pulsette's ability. All right, so we're going to get to the boss's first actual activation because clearly uh, we defeated him before he got a chance to activate last round. But I'm just activating the one that the token is currently over. Now, if this card was debuffed, he would only uh, take away one aggro, but he's going to take away three, which means that Holland is down to nothing. Then he's going to attack for X plus one, stage number is zero, so that's one damage, and then heal for zero. So a pretty weak card overall. Now, in this case, 
Um, no one has any aggro, and Kukurito and Pulsette are both tied at two ranks, so I can pick which one takes the one damage. Clearly I'll go on Kukurito, even though Pulsette has uh, some shields, because <laughs> she's not going to die anytime soon. Okay, now we go into the next round. No mobs coming out, since we haven't advanced to the next stage. And I did forget to put those down. All right, so this round, if I don't defeat him, he's going to do two damage to everybody, piercing, or just four damage to the person with the most aggro, if I debuff him. Then I'll gain two shields, and then he'll attack for three. So much nastier card there. Pulse set's going to be first. Let's roll. Ooh, four uh, stars. No soul, but it's so far to go up, we probably don't need it anyway. So the big question is, do we want to attack him before he gets a chance to go this turn? Uh, the Rabbit Punch would do two, since one is tapped. Uh, Pyrokinesis could do four all by itself, or we could just do Energy Bolt for two. And nobody else really has any options for attacking. I think Che might just rest to get her big tank attack back, and Holland can, of course, do Fortress to get more shields. So yeah, that makes sense to me. Why give the guy a chance to attack? The stars won't help her at all because Rabbit Punch would just let her get more reds and she's already at her max. And Pyrokinesis... Oh, let's see, it's going to do five damage to her. Uh, can I afford to do it? Well, let's do it anyway. I could have Che heal her for six, actually, if I boost it, but then I'd have to wait another turn for the tank skill. But I think healing for six when she's almost dead does make sense. Yeah, actually, I don't even need that now that I think about it because she got her free Empower, but it's fine. So Pulsette will do Pyrokinesis. That's one aggro for her. Uh, she's going to take, she's going to boost it. So she'll take five damage, uh, leaving her with eight damage total. But uh, she will do four damage to the boss. And again, she could use her shield, but I don't know, one or two. <laughs> and actually, that's nine damage total. You know what? Maybe she will use her shield. Sure. Okay, Holland uh, might as well get a fourth shield. The removing something from himself won't affect anything. So he's at max shields, but now he can get all his stuff back and finally start getting some aggro. Uh, che will go ahead and heal with a boost for six to pulse up, but get an aggro as well. What I'm thinking is next round they can both use Cool Hunt to put all their aggro on Holland. That should help. And then Kukurito will do a Rabbit Punch. That's for two. And then, ooh, she'll have a three strength Rabbit Punch next turn. That's great. So the boss is defeated. Now, we don't get Soul unless we defeat his final form. But uh, clearly here we got him. Uh, this will reset to stage one. Go up here to eight life again, or six in this case. And we're going to spawn two more mobs. This guy is stealth, so he only has one life. But we can't get to him unless uh, we've defeated everybody else. Although the boss does not count, so we don't have to worry about him. And let's see, this guy will make us tap two cards and then take away some of our aggro, so just kind of annoying. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, they both came out thinking they were all stealthy, but the boar is just kind of rampaging around and they're just sitting there in the middle of nowhere. So, Sniper would have done three piercing damage and then boosted everybody else with a combo. But yeah, instead, I think I'll just wipe him out. Now for stage three, you always use just the boss's unique cards. So you do not use any of the common cards. It's just all bore all the time. Which means this turn, he'll do four or two if he's debuffed. Uh, he'll add a black token to a target. Go check my English translations. They can't use, oh no, black. Uh, when you put a shield on cooldown, suffer two damage. That's not too great. And then I'll tap two cards, either of the current leader or if I debuff of whoever has most aggro. So yeah, I mean, I think we're definitely just going to kill these guys and then smack him, sure. All right, Holland, you're up. Show these guys who's boss. Oh, okay, two soul that I'll probably never get to use and one star. And let's see, he's definitely going to do an energy bolt. Uh, might as well boost it. Huh, <laughs> he could actually kill both of those stealth guys with it or hit the boss for two, that seems better. Oh wait, can I just kill the boss this turn? I probably can, but yeah. All right, so let's do Energy Bolt, and I guess do two damage against the boss, suffer two damage, but I'll just use a shield to cancel it. Does get me an aggro. And plank, plank, we need four more. All right, and Che, she can do one damage to a mob, so let's go and kill our sniper. Oh, and darn it, I meant to give her a star so that she could... Oh, wait, yeah, she's got uh, these, so she'll get rid of one, and that'll let her move an aggro to Holland from herself. There we go. And gets her all her stuff back, although, again, I don't think it'll matter. Echo Rito will do three damage to the boss. Take that. Use that five total. And then false set. Yeah, can blow him up without even putting herself in danger. Ha! And just for fun, she could use her plus one in power to get an extra target and kill the pit snake too. We don't need to, but why not? So bye bye boar, you are no more. So like I said, that was the tutorial. Clearly the number of minions and the bosses you face can get much nastier.
Okay, look at this guy with 16 life each phase, tons of minions coming out. Ooh, fire, ambushes, death. And you also have an entire extra deck of red enemies that can come and attack you. And then a lot of the bosses have unique enemies they can summon, which uh, kind of changes things up quite a bit. But of course, you can face the challenge because every time you beat a boss, or if you just start at a later stage, you get to level up into cooler and cooler things. So that was Testament, currently on Kickstarter. Uh, check out my other review video if you want to hear my full thoughts on it. Good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.